This question appeared on a video about how to get data from a CSV file using ActiveX data objects. And what Klaus wanted to know was basically how to do the same thing, but using a tab delimited file rather than a CSV file. So to help with that, I've got an Excel workbook ready to go. I've already saved it as a macro enabled file, and I've saved that in the same folder as a subfolder called My Files. And this folder contains four separate text files that we'll connect to. Now, rather than my standard movies examples, which you may have been expecting, based on the fact that it's only two days until Christmas, I went with a slightly more seasonal example. Each one of these text files contains a list of the 12 days of Christmas and what dates you should be expecting to receive certain gifts. So I've got a proper CSV file saved as a CSV file. You can see the comma separated list of values there. I've also got a TXT file version of that same thing. So it's still comma separated, but saved as a TXT file. I've got a tab delimited text file. So rather than commas, we've got the columns separated by tab spaces. And then I've got a, a mixed version of that file as well, where, where one column is separated with a tab and the other columns are separated with commas. So to get started with that, as I say, I've got the Excel workbook set up. In the Visual Basic Editor, I've created a new module and started a simple subroutine. And I've also set a reference to the Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects Library. So with all that in place, we can get started with writing the code. Now, if you already know the basics of working with ActiveX Data Objects, you might want to skip ahead to the chapter of the video where we connect to the tab delimited file. This section is just in case you need a quick recap or you're not that familiar with ActiveX Data Objects. Here's the basic code we'll need to write to connect to a text file. I'll need to declare a variable that can hold a reference to an adodb.connection object. Then I'll need to create a new instance of that class. So I can say set cn equals new adodb.connection. And then I need to set the connection string property. So I'll say cn.connection string equals. And in some double quotes, I can write out the connection string. Actually, that's a bit of a lie. I'm definitely not going to write out the connection string by hand. I'm going to skip over to connectionstrings.com and I'll drop this link in the video description so you have it to hand. And I'm going to use the Microsoft Text ODBC driver. So I'm just going to copy this basic connection string from that website, pop back to the Visual Basic Editor and then paste all that in. Now, there's a bit of modification I'd like to do here just to make things a little easier to read. I'd like to break this onto separate lines. I'm going to try to identify where the semicolon characters are, the different individual properties listed in this connection string. So I'm going to break this up and then concatenate the line onto a new line and then get the extensions part there as well and do the same thing. Okay. The bit that we want to change here, of course, is the, um, the path that's listed. I don't want to list uh, files in the text files folder, placeholder. I want to refer to the my files folder saved in the same directory as this workbook. So I'm going to take away the C colon backslash text files folder backslash, and then I'm going to break this line up by concatenating this workbook.path. And then to the end of that, I can concatenate a backslash and my files and another backslash, and then that will give me access to that folder. At this point, I'm going to give it a quick test by opening the connection and then closing it again. So I'll say cn.open, give myself a few blank lines and say cn.close. And then if I run the subroutine and nothing goes wrong and nothing apparently happens whatsoever, that's a pretty good sign. Next, I'd like to extract the contents of one of the text files in the folder. And to do that, we'll use a record set object. So back to the top of the subroutine, I'll declare a new variable. I'll call this one rs as adodb.recordset. Then once we've opened up the connection, we can create a new record set object. So we'll say set rs equals new adodb.recordset. And then we can set a couple of the basic properties of that record set object. So we'll say rs.activeConnection equals cn. Then we're going to say rs.source. And this is where we'll write a very basic select statement to select everything from one of our text files. So in some double quotes, we'll write our very basic select star, select asterisk, which is just select all columns from, and then the name of the text file I want to get is written in a set of square brackets. So I'm going to use the 12 days comma dot CSV file as our first example. And then I can paste all that in. Then I want to just quickly check that that's going to work. I can say rs.open and then a little later on, we can say rs.close. And then again, if I just quickly run this subroutine just to check that nothing happens, if nothing happens, that's another good sign. 
Finally, in this little recap section, I want to write the contents of the record set out into sheet one in the workbook. We'll be using sheet one for all the demonstrations here, so let's make sure we clear it out each time. So at the top of the subroutine, I'm going to just say sheet one dot cells dot clear. And then once we've opened up the record set, we can say something like sheet one and then refer to a range on that worksheet. Let's say range A2. And then I'm going to say copy from record set and reference the RS object that we've created. If we just very quickly run that one to quickly check that it works, so currently sheet one is empty, but if we run the subroutine, it's now fully populated with the 12 days of Christmas. We can do a little bit extra here as well. We could add some column headings in and we can change the column widths as well. So just going back to the visual basic editor, after I've copied out from the record set, I'm going to just quickly copy paste this and say dot current region dot entire column dot auto fit to make sure all the columns are the correct width. And then to get the column headings out, I'm going to use a simple integer variable so that I can count through the fields collection of the record set. So at the top, I'll say dim i as integer. And then after opening the record set, we'll say for i equals zero to rs.fields.count minus one. And then next i. And then inside that loop, we'll say sheet one dot cells open some round brackets. We'll refer to row number one, and then we'll refer to column i plus one, and set its value to be equal to rs.fields, open some round brackets, and then refer to the integer variable, dot name. And if all that felt a bit quick and you've not seen that before, we have plenty of other videos which talk about this basic stuff. So I just want to quickly get to this stage now where if we run the subroutine one more time and then have a look back at the worksheet, it's a little bit neater and tidier and we've got the column headings sitting in there as well. So this code works perfectly when we connect to a CSV file. The commas in that CSV file indicate the beginning of each new field, which is generated in the ADODB record set, and that in turn generates each new column in the Excel output. The same thing is true if we connected to a text file using commas as the delimiters. So the 12 days comma.txt file is just a copy of the CSV file with a different extension. We're still using commas to separate out the various values. So if we change our code to refer to the txt file rather than the csv file, we can run the same code again and we'll also end up with three separate columns indicated by the commas. What if we tried to connect to our tab delimited text file though? If I go for 12 days tab, you can see that the values are separated by tab spaces rather than by commas. And if I change my file that I'm connecting to here to say 12 days tab, when I run this subroutine this time, although the code runs, it doesn't detect the fact that there are separate columns in those uh, files. So everything appears in one single column all mashed together. The tab spaces are still generated. You can see if you select a cell in this uh, output, the tab spaces are still there. They're just not presented properly in the Excel cells. So how can we get the record set to recognize the tab character as a delimiter? We actually have several choices, but the one we're going to go for in this video is to create something called a schema.ini file. Now the schema file is just another text file that's stored in the same folder as the files you're trying to import. And in that file, you can indicate what sort of delimiter character to use, along with a range of other things about the definitions of the columns and data types. We'll keep things simple to begin with. I just want to indicate that for our 12 days tab.txt file, the delimiter character should be a tab. So to make this work, we'll need a new, um, a new empty notepad document. So let's open up notepad. And then in there, the first thing we need to do is write out the name of the file in some square brackets. So I can quickly cheat and copy and paste this as I already have it written into my VB editor. So let's copy that. 12 days tab.txt. And then on the next line, the first property we're going to modify is the format. And we're going to say format equals tab delimited. Now, if you want to know the range of other properties you can modify here, there's a fairly comprehensive help page. Again, I'll drop this link in the video description so you have it to hand. But obviously, we're just going here with the tab delimited format. There are various other options available there as well. So having done that, 
we need to save this file in the same folder as the files we're going to import, and we must call it schema.ini. So I'm going to head to the file menu and choose save as, and then in the same folder, let's just change its name so it's called schema.ini. We can then save that. We can leave it open if we want to, and I'm going to leave mine open because we're going to make some further changes to it. And if we then simply head back to the Visual Basic Editor, making no changes to this code whatsoever, if we just run the subroutine, we'll find that now we've got our tab delimiter data written out in separate columns. We can use the same schema file to apply settings to any of the files in the same folder. So let's say, for example, we wanted to indicate that the 12 days comma.txt file uses commas as its delimiters. We don't need to do this, as you saw earlier on. This is the default anyway. If we just change the file we're using here in our VB editor to refer to the 12 days comma.txt, we can run that subroutine again, and we'll notice that that just behaves normally. We get the, uh, the comma separators indicating which fields to create. But just in case we wanted to indicate this explicitly, we could have another file definition in the same schema file. So let's just copy the two lines we've written here, and then we can change the uh, 12 days tab to 12 days comma, and then the format for a comma separated value delimited file, as you'll see from the reference guide, is CSV delimited. So we can either copy and paste that or just type it in. This won't make any changes, of course, but um, it's just uh, nice to indicate this explicitly. We also have a file called 12daysmix.txt. Now, at the moment, you'll hopefully see that this has both tabs and commas separating its columns. If I were to open up this file or connect to this file with ActiveX data objects without indicating otherwise, we'll see that it uses the commas to determine which fields to create. So if I just head back to my Visual Basic Editor, I'll save my schema.ini file though first, head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I go for 12 days mix. When I run the subroutine here, we'll see that we get the last two columns being separated, but the first two being combined. So what I'm going to do back in the schema.ini file is copy the first two lines again, and then paste that in, change the file name to say 12 days mix, and then use the tab delimited format for that. So I'll save the schema file again, head back to the Visual Basic Editor, run the subroutine again, and this time we'll see we get the day and date column separated, but date and gift are now combined. We can also indicate whether the source file has column headers or not. Again, this isn't something we need to do for this example, as the column headers are being detected correctly anyway. But just in case we did want to do this, we can head back to the schema file, and then for any one of the three files we've indicated here, we can say col name header equals true. So again, if I save this one, and then I change the file that I'm importing again back to 12 days tab back in our code, just to prove that I haven't messed things up more than anything else. I can run that subroutine again, and we'll get the files with the column headers. If your source file doesn't include column headers, you can use the schema file to generate them. So let's just head back to the My Files folder, and I'm just going to open up the 12 days tab text file, and let's remove the header, header row there completely. So no column headers left. I'll save that file and then close it back down again. In the schema file, what I can then do is set the column name header equal to false, and then I can generate new columns in this syntax. So I can say col1 equals, and then choose the name for the column. I'm going to call it day, and I'm going to set a data type for it as well. So I'm going to use the data type of long, which is the equivalent of long integer in VBA terms. There's a list of the data types available in the uh, in the documentation here. Again, as I say, I'll post a link to this um, this documentation in the video description. So that's my um, my first column specified. I can then say col2 equals, and I'm going to call this one date, and then I'm going to set the data type to date time, and then I'll say col3 equals gift, and then the data type of this is going to be text. When you specify text, you can also specify the length of the text by applying the width parameter to it. So you'd say width, and if it was 10 characters long, for example, I could say width 10. This is more useful for fixed width text files, which we're not working with here, of course. So I'll just say gift text. 
I can then save that schema file again. And even though I've deleted the column headers, if I head back to the VB code and I run this one again, we'll see that we've regenerated the column headers based on the information in the schema file. One other useful thing we can do with our schema file that I'd like to look at in this video is assign a default format to help with detecting date time values. Just before I do this, I'm going to head back to the My Files folder and I'm going to make a copy of the 12 days tab file. What I'm then going to do is just open that file up and it's fairly obvious here that I've written my date formats in a UK style, so day, month, year. What if we didn't have these first six rows though? What if we only had first of the first through to the sixth of the first? So I could legitimately read these dates as either the 6th of January 2022 or June the 1st, 2022. So what would my, my import do if I uh, had those just those six dates? I'm going to save that file, close it down, and then head back to the Visual Basic Editor and run that subroutine again. Now, the end result, as it turns out, is that I get my dates detected correctly with the UK format, so 6th of January. And just to quickly prove that, I can modify the formatting of the output here. So it's a slightly more elaborate date format. Let's include the name of the month as well. So it's detecting that all of those are in January. But what if that was wrong? What if those were actually meant to be month, day, year? Well, to make that work, we can head back to the schema.ini file, and then we can add a date time format property. And we can say equals and then just use any standard date time format pattern. So I'm going to go mm forward slash dd forward slash yyyy. Having done that, I can save the schema file again, head back to the VB editor and run the subroutine again. And this time we'll see that the dates come out. And if I can just format these again so that they're formatted in the appropriate way with the month name as well that I've detected them as January through to June, rather than all in January. One final quick note on this is that if you have some dates that are in your source file that do not match the pattern or the format you've assigned here. So if I just go back to the My Files folder, I'm going to delete the 12 days tab file completely, and then just rename the copied one. So I bring back the days in December, so these again are being written out in the UK format, month, uh, sorry, day, month, year. But I've indicated to my schema file that the, all the dates are in month, day, year format. So if I attempted to import these files now, when I run that subroutine again, we'll find that any invalid dates simply aren't imported at all. So there we go. There's a bit about using a schema file to control how you import text files using ActiveX data objects. I hope that's enough information to answer the original question. Uh, I rather suspect it's a bit too much information, but um, well, there we go. There's my gift to you, Klaus. Merry Christmas. Um, I hope you found that one useful, guys. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.